Warning. Content warning. I'm going to present a narrative that's going to weave between multidimensionality, that's going to reference multiple major world religions and perspectives. Dear viewer, if you are such a person that has a locked perspective, a myopic vision, or suffer from religious trauma, please stop watching this video now, but hit the subscribe button anyway and leave this video a thumbs up because I did forewarn you. I'm going to share the words, a poem from a Persian mystic, a teacher of Sufism, which on the surface, Sufism is known as a mystic branch of Islam, but that was merely to survive in the Muslim countries. The Sufis did this. They created this veneer, this facade of a deeper form of Islam, but no, it's actually Egyptian, ancient Egyptian mysticism from the arcane schools, the same body of knowledge that the Christ, Yeshua, studied when he left uh, eat, uh, left the lands to escape Herod's wrath. Um, and I'm going to share the words of um, Al-Halaj. And <clears throat> essentially, this poem and this narrative is going to focus on the source of discontent for humanity based in the ego and the extreme polarization that we witness in this world. Um, I, you can't tell me that these kids that are violently protesting across the United States at college campuses about what's going on in Israel, um, you can't tell me that there's something wrong with this country when you have children who are at the primes of their life at institutions of higher learning and the flower of their life when they're distracted by this satanic energy in the world. Granted, their intents are noble, but they're misguided and they're being manipulated and used as food by the archons. Anyway, how we become our own enemy. And I'm going to share this little poem from Al-Halaj, a Sufi mystic. And he writes, is it you or I, this reality in the eye? Beware, beware of the word too. Beware of the word too. If any religion I follow, I follow loosely the branch of Hinduism that worships or venerates or investigates Shiva. Shiva means nothing. She, va, that which is not, means nothing. Nothing from which everything was created, created and manifested to be adorned and respected. Observers cannot exist when the whole world is in non-duality because all is one. No distinction between observers and observed would be possible. Shiva is what all of that represents to me. The dissolution of the ego in the fires of Shiva, the Atman, the source, the loving golden radiance energy of golden source energy. That is what Shiva represents to me. And, but these kids, you're telling me this discontent, this political polarization, this polarization in every aspect of life. People are worshiping their egos. Humanity has largely become splintered and disconnected from its original unity. We have come to a point where much of modern life exists within a polarized bubble. There is us and then there is everything else that lies external to us. And between these two, there is little if no connection. And this has become the modern mantra. And it is applied across the board to most aspects of our lives, to nature and the environment, personal relations, other living creatures, events and circumstances, and even to those we refer to as our gods. In short, the contemporary worldview is one of incredible isolation. We may consider that modern life is globally connected like never before, and we would be correct in this thinking. However, up to a point, as a species upon this planet, we have become interconnected to an unparalleled degree. Our communications spread around the world in less than seconds. News is shared across cultures and languages, and algorithms trade economies 
in split seconds. The majority of people now receive and react to incoming messages on their smartphones and devices almost instantly. And yet, despite all this, and amidst all this, we are separated as a species like never before. Yet, this separation is an internal one. We have become separated not only from ourselves, from our sense of self, but also from our contact with the larger cosmos, our sense of origin. And I'm going to share this with you, dear esteemed viewer. I, I want you to, to understand the glory, the beauty of this planet that we live on, this planet. If these kids that are violently protesting, if they were truly mesmerized by life, the gift of life, their own inner divinity, their energies would not be, their lives would not be being destroyed by this archon of divisiveness that the dark cabal has created on this world. And it, and it never stops. And politics are a losing game, people. Politics are nothing but a, another avenue to, to siphon your divine energy, to destroy your Atman. Because planet Earth is a sacred cosmic life laboratory for the creation of a wondrous variety of beings. We must understand that the true, when you be touch source and become in contact with the true wonder and beauty of life, you transcend this drama of the third dimension. And when you understand that when you look up into the sky, the, beneath the stunning, dazzling spectacles of around 300 billion galaxies lies the oneness, only one soul. We are all portions of the one that is the ultimate source of this universe and all life. Therefore, as parts and portions of the infinite, immutable, immeasurable one, for the sake of our adventure into consciousness, we are pretending to be separate. Please, people, stop pretending to be separate before you destroy your lives. Before you destroy the wonder and the potential of your life. That is only what this world currently is operating on under is is the insane desire to destroy souls satan is roaring like a lion satan is roaring like a lion looking to take as many people to destroy as many lives with as he as they may as the whole satanic network which exists people if you have not woken up to the fact that there is a very real, very highly organized network of satanic energies looking to destroy everything divine within each individual, then perhaps you have been sleeping too long and it's time to wake up. All is one. We emanate from one. Embrace the Shiva void, the Shivaya void within. Touch your Atman and rise in your frequency and leave this stupid carnal sideshow behind. And when you do, when you commit to being in daily contact with your Atman, then you discover your true divine power. Then you rise as a new earth metahuman upon the new earth golden age timeline. Namaste. Namaskaram.